Fiddle sings, we dance. In time, through time, with all who call these lands and waters home. The Great Spirit creates this sweet crescent. Epicuit, Ile Saint-Jean, Fair Isle of the Sea. Kissed in and out of being, with the rise and fall of the waves, the gentle island, Prince Edward Island, Charlottetown, the cradle of Confederation. Cette terre qui parut idyllique à Cartier, une île verdoyante, sertie dans une mer diamantée, est l'île du Prince Édouard, notre demeure. We dig today to find our yesterdays. Bones tell of creatures who walk the earth no more. Arrowheads reveal the skill of great hunters. Voices are heard anew. Attirés par les terres nouvelles et toutes leurs richesses, les puissances européennes conquièrent la mer et les mondes s'entrechoquent. In the Gulf of the mighty St. Lawrence, great cultures meet in war and peace trade and trauma, deportation and negotiation. They trade goods, illnesses, and philosophies with the peoples for whom these shores have been home for thousands of years. We are taught justice by those who fought for it, by those who did not live to see it. Every land question lays down a legacy of courage. No voices will be lost. Speak a name, and history roars. Rien ne peut effacer l'importance d'un lieu. Un peuple donne son cœur à la terre qui lui a donné la vie. And always stands the island singing sand and soil, blushing oxide red, in the land of Glooscap, beneath the sky world blue. This island, surveyed by Captain Holland, the beautiful butterfly of the Gulf, becomes 67 lots of land. A quilt is born. Say a name and a number. Lot 32 or 57. And an islander will know your deep bloodlines with small degree of separation. L'île est morcelée en lot, numéro 24 ou 35 qui règle le sort des insulaires et leur laisse en héritage labeur ou richesse. When Ile Saint-Jean gave up its sainted name to become Prince Edward Island, Charlottetown became its heart, with this fine colonial building taking its pulse. Depuis l'époque coloniale, Province House est le cœur politique de l'île du Prince Édouard. Isaac Smith's neoclassical gem, built by the best of island craftsmen, marks the birthplace of Confederation. Housing a legislature and a Supreme Court, it provided scope for imagination in the creation of a nation. It is September 1864. The steamer Queen Victoria lands at the foot of Great George Street. Through sandstone eyes, Province House sees yet the day the Fathers of Confederation, Sir John A. MacDonald, Georges Etienne Cartier, George Brown, Thomas Darcy McGee, and their Confederates came this way. The islanders cast a quick eye to what they called the Confederate schooner, but raced off to the first circus come to town in 20 years. Mm -hmm. 
with island courtesy W.H. Pope, the Provincial Secretary, rose out to invite the talk that would be heard by history. The political ringleaders were proud of their own hard-won responsible governments. The Maritimers and the two Canadas stand on the fertile soil of this island to share a dream. Loyal to older ties, they forge new bonds. Ils explorent de nouveaux moyens de bâtir une démocratie. Sans coup de feu ni tir de canon, ils ont dansé et débattu l'idée d'une grande nation. They were a party of almost strangers, partners tuning up the great orchestration of ideas that would play a way into a nation. At the Charlottetown Conference, strong wills waltzed with champagne toasts and hard-nosed caveats. Island delicacies, island demands. The ideas first launched here set sail for Confederation, July 1st, 1867. But Prince Edward Island was not yet on board. Our first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, continued to woo the island. In 1873, PEI said yes and allowed Canada to join her. <laughs> 